still have a bloody hell aisle. Marvellous. You alright? How's it going? Good. Now, a little bit of a problem with the blackbird. Don't like the way it's handling. Uh, it's either too soft. Springs are too soft in it, I can feel that. But it's the rebound. It's the dampening of it all. It's either no oil in it at all, or it's had a bad oil leak in both legs. Or the dampening's been seriously over dampened or seriously under dampened. It feels like it's just riding on the springs. You're literally down the road and it's like that. So, um, I think I know what's wrong with it. I'm not sure, I'm no mechanic. So I've taken it to my guru, who is a mechanic. There's not a lot he doesn't know. He took it for a test ride. And uh, he did suspect the front forks. So he's done a little thing with uh, toe wraps. And the left hand fork has got less oil than the front. How he can tell that, I don't know. But he knows what he's on about. So I'll just uh, take you through it. Now, I can't see whether you can see, because the display on the garage cam is crap, but there's the tyre wrap, there. You put the tyre wrap down here, and it's gone all the way up to there, with uh, no problem at all. And if you can see the other one, which I very much doubt it's here. That's higher than that one. So, so that's why he suspects it's uh, a lack of oil or completely wrong oil. He's the man. So I'm going to take the forks out and check the seals. Might, for the price of them, I might just put new seals in anyway. Uh, I've never done it on a bird. But that suspension leg, normal way up suspension leg, they're all generic, they're all the same. Some have got multiple bits inside, some have got one great big long spring, if you will. Others have got spacers, washers, they've all got the same stuff. Just getting it off the bird is proving a bit of a, bit of a nightmare. Right. Now, for those of you who have extenders, bar risers on, if you never know, or if you haven't got them on but you want them on, this is how they work. This is the original leg. Goes through the clamp, and the original leg stops there. That would normally just bolt onto here with a little clip. How these work is you take this cap off, you screw it down, the spring actually sits at the bottom of this, put the cap on, and it's just an extender. Quite clever really, bit of a ball ache to do, but you know, it's one of them things. Now I needed to get all this off to get, obviously, all this through. So I've had to take the, so I've had to take the master cylinder off, and I've hooked that up so it doesn't leak. Don't want that bloody leaking over my new paint. I've taken the bar end off. And there's two little electrical connectors. Which plug into here. And that's for your brake light switch. So I'm going to do the other side. Uh, come and join me with it. And you'll be able to see exactly what you're doing with that. Right, to get this one off. First of all, I'll have to take these two off. To get the slutch, uh, slutch, the clutch cylinder off the bike. And I hope it comes off. In, yes, it will. It'll just come off in one piece. 
Once again, there's two cables at the back of it for the clutch switch. So you need to get these, I'll show you. So if you have a look, you've got two spade connectors here. You get a little screwdriver, and if you just prise, there's one. And there's the other, I do believe. There's the two. Same on the other side. So I'm going to take the all this oil off the bar end first to make sure this doesn't go anywhere because that and um, new paint, they just don't like each other. Get me a little kit. Keep everything in one place per side so you know what you're doing. Be careful of your tank. So that's loose, I'm going to get a long tie wrap ready. We just undo it. So will be able to move out the way. Try and keep this level as possible. So I'm going to attempt notice I did say attempt to keep it as level as possible with the tie rack. Hope that's good enough. Don't go walkies. So they should be fine. Oil should be safe enough. Okay. That one there. That there. Okay. Carefully, your tank. Oh, wow! I'm a monkey, I'm an ape. I'm going to put this on. What a dickhead! There's no need for that. And that's slowly but surely creeping down. Madness. So try and keep all your bits together. 
the handlebar. Now to get this one off, it's not hard. Oh, hang on, snap ring. Right, here, you can't see it, you can just about feel it, let alone see it. There is a ring, snap ring. And to get it off is really easy. To get it on is really easy, and to lose it is even easier. Really easy to lose these. But I will show you it. See what I mean about jumping? And there's your ring. It's just a snap ring. But if you don't know it's there and you just pull it out, that goes ka into the next century. So, snap rings off, bolts out. You might be able to go and wiggle it off, and you might not. This one you can, the other one I had trouble with. So, you should be able to wiggle this off. He says, when he's on full extension on his electrics. There you go. Let that dangle. Now, if you have a look at these two, these are the main, so you need to crack these off before the bike goes up in the air. And you've got these pinch bolts here as well, if you can see them. So you've got a pinch bolt here and a pinch bolt here, which is a five or six mil Allen. Right. I'm just checking now. Short, sh short, sharp, shock. Try saying that when you're sober. And the same for the other side. Spinning the whole bloody lot. But it's loose. So because these have got bar risers. This whole unit spins. I don't know whether it's supposed to, but it does. Never come across these before. Right. Next. We'll get these off, or 
just undone or just cracked. Just want to crack them. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. too much. Some yoke bolts. They're the very last bolts you undo. Right, next we need to get the wheel off and get the bike in the air. Fun. These little strappy poos, and I'll be strapping them to the yoke. And they're equidistant apart, I hope. Or at least I've tried to get them equidistant. What I'll do is I'll start, I don't really know where I start. I'll take the mud guard off first, I think. Go. You stand a good chance of remembering if they're all together. Oh, great. Be careful with your paintwork. Scratches behind the fork leg, but when you take the bolt out, see ya, push the push it down and it'll fall out. So these two bolts, push it down, extract it. Fortunately, enough is all hidden behind here. You won't see the scratch. Right, that's the mud guard off. Next, crack every uh, every bolt. And seeing as everything's predominantly 12 on this bike, I'm just going to stick a 12 in. Done. 
guarantee everything's 12 mil, which is a bloody good thing. I don't know why they've got two pinch bolts per side. Definitely overkill. I'm going to take them out. At least I know where they are then. Stubborn one. I say they can't be stubborn, they've only just been put in. So there's your four pinch bolts out. Next, I'm going to do is the calipers. Release the calipers. Don't forget when you're taking these off, because these already been out on mine. If they're tough, bounce them. Just don't try and do it all in one, just bounce it. Then you won't shear them with any luck. I'll show you what I mean. Make sure that's all the way in, nice and tight, and just bounce it. And every bounce, put a bit more pressure on. And of course, because I've got an odd bolt, it's a Dorx. I can't remember which bloody school speed it is there. Nice and in, bounce. That's them. And I've got that bloody awkward 10 mil. If I remember rightly, it's a 10. And lots of time playing around with this bloody nut uh, bolt. It's really awkward to get in and uh, very, very easy to cross thread. You just can, you can only just get your fingers in there. There you go. Is that free now? Can you see? 